So hello guys, I am Dr. Umkar Sangeeta Dilipra Sonone from Team AFMG, and today I am here with a very important and high yielding topic according to any examination point of view, whether it is your NEET PG or your MCI FMG exam. Uh, this topic has been important always uh, from the medicine point of view, and this is a very straightforward, pretty straightforward topic if you understand it. Okay, it's pretty logical. That's it. So if you understand the basics, it would be easier for you to answer this topic. And always there would be one to two questions minimum. I'm saying there can be more as well uh, in this topic. Okay, and uh, it is a overlap topic between nephrology. So nephrology has its own importance in electrolyte disturbances. So the important topic that we are going to discuss uh, today is definitely electrolyte disturbances. The disturbances in the levels of sodium, potassium, calcium, and then we'll discuss somewhat about magnesium. Okay, but these three are the most important ones which you need to remember at any cost. Okay, now first I'll start. With uh, this one here, you can see two ECGs. I'll be making a comparison over here. Okay, so in the first ECG that you can see, I hope so. This is a, a commonly repeated ECG, and I don't think so that any of you will will have any doubt in this answering this question. So what you can see in this ECG, as I've always told, I've explained um, cardio already. So you need to check for the second lead and then the chest lead. Okay, so here if I check for the second lead also, I can see there is a tall and a tented T wave. The same is usually seen in V3, V4, V5, and V6 chest trees, right? So here, what is seen usually? So here, I can see a tall tented T wave. Along with tall tented T wave, sometimes along with the tall tented T wave, sometimes I'll be able to see ST segment elevation. Okay, I'll be able to see a ST segment elevation as well. Okay, please remember this. So these are the usual features that anybody sees in this condition. And uh, I hope so. All of you would be able to answer this electrolyte abnormality by now. So this this condition is actually called as <coughs> hyperkalemia, right? I don't think so. There would be any issue answering this. So this condition is actually called as hyperkalemia, right? Extra excess level of potassium inside the body or in the plasma. Okay. So hyperkalemia we are talking about here. You can see on ECG there are two most important findings that you need to check for. First is a tall tented T wave. Second, there would be a ST segment elevation. Apart from that, sometimes also you can see that the P wave amplitude or the P wave height would be decreased. It would be less than 2.5 mm. Okay, so either the P wave amplitude would be decreased or sometimes even the P wave can be absent at excess calcium level, at excess potassium levels. Okay, apart from that, sometimes if the potassium level rises so much, the QRS complexes will become broader. Okay, the QRS complexes will become broader. Okay, that you need to remember. So here, definitely the first ion that we are going to talk about is potassium. I hope all of you are quite aware of the normal potassium value. The normal potassium value is somewhere between 3.5 to 5 milli equivalents per liter. Okay, it is 3.5 to 5 milli equivalents per liter. Anything more than 5 milli equivalents per liter would be considered as hyperkalemia. Anything less than 3.5 milli equivalents per liter would be considered as hypokalemia. The first ECG that I'm talking about here, you can see. There are three important features. First, there is a tall tented T wave. Second, there would be a ST segment elevation, which is seen. Okay. And third, you can see the P wave is either decreased in amplitude or it is absent in some cases. And if the potassium value is somewhere around more than 8 milli equivalents per liter, please remember if the potassium value goes more than 8 milli equivalents per liter, then on ECG, you will not be able to uh, see any type of waves, rather only a sinusoidal pattern or such kind of a pattern is seen. This is what is known as a sinusoidal pattern or a sine wave pattern. If the potassium level goes beyond 8 milli equivalent per liter, okay? This is most important. You need to remember always, right? So now definitely, <coughs> what are the causes behind hyperkalemia that you need to remember, guys? So please remember, usually excessive hemolysis, that means excessive RPC destruction, can be one of the causes of hyperkalemia because that will increase the serum potassium levels. Okay. So massive blood transfusion, which will cause excessive hemolysis, that can be one of the reasons. Apart from that, metabolic acidosis is an important cause of hyperkalemia. Please remember, as I always say, sodium and bicarbonate are friends. They go hand in hand. Okay. It's the same way potassium and H plus ions are friends. Okay. So when one increases, the other would increase. In cases of metabolic acidosis, when the H plus, H plus ions will rise, definitely there would be a, a rise which is seen in serum potassium levels as well. Okay, so metabolic acidosis is one of the important causes apart from this. Definitely chronic kidney disease or acute kidney injury can be one of the important causes. Why? Because in chronic kidney disease or acute kidney injury, what will happen? 
the excretion of potassium or the excretion of H plus ions will stop. Okay, and that will cause retention of potassium ions inside the body. That will increase the serum potassium levels. Apart from that, as we know, aldosterone is a hormone which is known to decrease the serum potassium levels. But if aldosterone decreases inside the body, so conditions where there is hypoaldosteronism, where the aldosterone levels will go down, there is a high probability that the potassium levels will spike up. The uh, the examples would be something like Addison's disease or Addisonian crisis uh, in conditions of Watterson Fredericks uh, Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome, right? Usually, when the adrenal gland is completely damaged, it can be adrenal tuberculosis, it can be HIV, or it can be a fungal infection like histoplasmosis. So, in all these conditions, the aldosterone levels will go down, and subsequently, the potassium levels will rise usually inside the body, right? So, these are the important causes of hyperkalemia that you need to remember. Okay. Now, after causes, once we know the causes, definitely you need to check. <coughs> sorry. You need to check for the serum potassium levels, which would be higher, more than five milli equivalents per liter. Apart from that, ECG will show us these three most important changes. And now, further, we need to uh, treat the patient. Okay. If I talk about the treatment of this patient, it is pretty straightforward. In this condition, definitely the potassium levels are higher. So, what can happen? So, please remember if the potassium level goes beyond eight milli equivalents per liter, as we know, potassium is a hormone which helps in repolarization or relaxation. So potassium uh, or it helps in diastole rather, right? So potassium agar bahut zyada rise ho jata hai. When it rises beyond a certain level, that means more than 8 milli equivalents per liter, the, definitely the patient can experience diastolic arrest, okay? The patient can experience diastolic arrest in this condition. And therefore, we need to treat the patient immediately. So always, if potassium is a relaxing hormone, we will have some stimulating hormone. If potassium is a relaxing ion, we will have some stimulating ion so to counteract the potassium effects on heart, we have calcium. Okay? So please remember, potassium and calcium are antagonistic of each other. Okay? So ulta kaam karte. Calcium stimulates the heart, whereas potassium relaxes the heart. That everybody of us knows. So if there is hyperkalemia, definitely to stop the action of potassium on the heart or to overcome the diastolic arrest that potassium has caused, definitely we need to give calcium to the patient. So in conditions of acute hyperkalemia, in conditions like acute hyperkalemia, for example, a patient of AKI or for example, a patient of chronic kidney disease who was started on ACE inhibitors or ARBs. So it's certain drugs usually, right? So these certain drugs have a high probability of causing hyperkalemia. So in conditions like this, where the patient presents to an emergency with acute hyperkalemia, here the drug of choice is definitely, here the treatment of choice or the drug of choice is IV 10% calcium gluconate is to be given. Okay, IV 10% calcium gluconate is to be given to this patient. No issues with this anybody? Please remember this, okay? Apart from that, if they ask you, now definitely you have stopped the action of potassium on the heart by giving calcium to the patient. But now you also need to decrease the serum potassium levels which is rising. So definitely to counteract that or to send potassium inside the cell, okay, or to decrease the levels of serum potassium, definitely the most effective drug that we give, okay, the most effective drug that we give is definitely IV insulin is started. And which type of insulin can be given IV? As we all are quite aware, IV regular insulin started, right? And insulin ka main action kya hota hai? How does it decrease the serum potassium levels? It sends potassium inside the cell, thereby decreasing its level in the serum or plasma. Okay? So please remember the most effective drug if they ask you for hyperkalemia, it is IV regular insulin. But definitely along with insulin, we need to give dextrose as well to the patient. Otherwise, the patient can suffer from hypoglycemia, right? So definitely, please remember the most effective drug is IV regular insulin. If they ask you along with this, what shall be given? So definitely along with this to potentiate the effect of insulin. Insulin ke effect badhane ke liye, with the same mechanism of action, we can give another drug. And that is what is salbutamol, which is a beta-2 agonist. As we know, it is a SABA used in cases of asthma. But here the dose would be more than four times that uh, which is given in asthma. Okay. So here we will give nebulization of salbutamol to the patient. And definitely if they ask you which is the most effective method, if they ask you which is the most effective method, the answer would be hemodialysis. Okay. The answer would be hemodialysis. No issues with this anybody. So please remember in cases of acute hyperkalemia, the drug of choice or the best drug to be given, first drug to be given is IV 10% calcium gluconate. But to decrease the serum potassium level, or the most effective drug uh, is definitely IV regular insulin given along with dextrose. Along with that, we can give nebulization of salbutamol to the patient 
and definitely the most effective method is hemodialysis but for example a patient of chronic hyper uh, hyperkalemia okay a patient is having hyperkalemia since very long and it is mild okay it is mild now so definitely we will prefer the oral route for the drug and the oral drug which is given in cases of chronic hyperkalemia it is known as oral pateromer is given please remember the drug name it is oral pateromer to be given no issues with this anybody i hope this is uh, very easy apart from that definitely you can give other drugs also you can even give furosemide to the patient which is loop diuretics okay that can also be <coughs> given to the patient potassium binding resins can be given to the patient but these are the most important ones that you need to give to the patient okay please remember this now i have spoke uh, i have talked about hyperkalemia the first one now second one the comparative one we need to talk about is decrease the serum potassium levels when the serum potassium levels would be less than 3.5 mg per liter here they were more than 5 here they would be less than 3.5 so this condition is nothing but it is hypokalemia this is hypokalemia when the serum potassium levels are decreasing okay So please remember, hypokalemia is also one of the important conditions that you need to remember. <coughs> hypokalemia can occur due to various causes. Okay, if I talk about the causes of hypokalemia, the important cause can be decreased potassium intake in the diet. First thing, second, it can be metabolic alkalosis. As I told you, metabolic acidosis causes hyperkalemia, but metabolic alkalosis causes hypokalemia because now the H plus ions level is decreasing. So likewise, potassium levels will also decrease. So metabolic alkalosis can be one of the important causes when there is sympathetic overactivity conditions like trauma or maybe if uh, there is toxicity of beta two agonists like salbutamol. So salbutamol was causing uh, salbutamol was used in hyperkalemia. So therefore, if it, uh, if there is toxicity of salbutamol, it can lead to hypokalemia. Right? This is easy. Apart from that, when there is increased excretion of potassium from the body, now increased excretion of potassium from the body occurs via kidney. So increased renal losses of potassium. It can be in conditions where there is increased aldosterone levels. As I told you, aldosterone अगर बढ़ता है, वो पोटैशियम को बाहर फेंकेगा. So if there is hyperaldosteronism, so primary hyperaldosteronism that is Combs syndrome or bilateral adrenal hyperplasia for that matter, adrenal adenoma for that matter, ascites, congestive heart failure, all of these conditions, whichever will increase the aldosterone levels. Will tend to decrease the potassium levels and cause hypokalemia in the patient. Apart from this, definitely uh, genetic syndromes like Barter syndrome or Gittelman syndrome are also known to cause hypokalemia. And a very important condition that is RTA, renal tubular acidosis. As we know, there are three types of RTA: renal tubular acidosis, RTA one, two, and four. So RTA one and two are known to cause hypokalemia, but RTA four is rather causing hyperkalemia. Okay, so RTA one and two are the causes of hypokalemia in the patient. How to diagnose it? So definitely, we will check for the serum potassium levels, which would be less than three point five milliequivalents per liter. Apart from that, we can also take a ECG. And what are the changes that can be seen on ECG? This is also a very commonly repeated question. Recently, in both the examinations, it has been asked. Okay. So here, the important things that you need to remember. The first thing that you can see here, you need to check for the T wave. Always check for the T wave in cases of potassium. Why? It is important. See, why is T wave produced on ECG? It is very simple. T wave is produced due to ventricular diastole or ventricular depolarization. And as I told you, which ion is responsible for diastole or depolarization? Repolarization. It is potassium. So, जब भी अगर पोटैशियम में कोई दिक्कत है, the first wave to be affected on ECG is definitely the T wave because it is showing you the diastole or repolarization. ठीक है? So here you need to check for the T wave again. In hyperkalemia, there were tall, tented T waves. But in this condition, you can see even in the second lead, you can see in the second standard lead. Or even in the chest leads, you can see clearly that there is a <clears throat> absent T wave. Sometimes it can be a absent T wave. It can be either a flat T wave or it can be a inverted T wave. Because in cases of hypokalemia, the repolarization of the diastole is not occurring properly, and therefore the T wave would not be evident on ECG, right? So either a absent, flat, or an inverted T wave would be seen. Apart from that, you can also see there is a ST segment depression. In hyperkalemia, there was a ST segment elevation here. Vice versa, there would be a ST segment depression in this patient, and an important hint that everybody gives after a T wave, you can see a positive wave which is appearing, and this positive wave which appears after a negative T wave, this is known as the U wave. So U wave is a feature of hypokalemia. U wave is a characteristic feature of hypokalemia in the patient. No issues with this, anybody? 
सो दीज आर द इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग्स यू नीड टू चेक ऑन द ईसीजी थ्री फाइंडिंग्स यहाँ पे थ्री फाइंडिंग्स वहां पे ओके सो दीज आर द थ्री इम्पोर्टेंट ईसीजी फाइंडिंग्स यू नीड टू रिमेम्बर नो इशूज विद दिस आई होप सो Now, if I I have spoken about the causes, I have talked about the ECG features of uh, this. Here, the patient will likely present to you with uh, muscle cramps or muscle weakness, which is the earliest symptom to uh, arise in the patient. Okay. Apart from that, the patient in longer run, or if there is a uh, acute hypokalemia, severe acute hypokalemia, the patient can even land up in respiratory muscle paralysis or diaphragmatic paralysis, and that can even cause death in the patient. Okay. So, in cases of hyperkalemia. in cases of hyperkalemia the cause of death can be diastolic arrest here the cause of death is definitely a diastolic arrest okay but in cases of hypokalemia the cause of death can be diaphragmatic paralysis here the cause of death would be diaphragmatic paralysis okay no issues with this anybody please remember these conditions moving further now talking about the treatment of hypokalemia i always tell you easy hai bahut अगर कोई आयन कम हो तो बाहर से दे दो वो आयन सो इफ देर इज हाइपोकलीमिया गिव पोटेशियम फ्रॉम आउटसाइड राइट सो इफ देर इज हाइपोकलीमिया इफ इट इज अ माइल्ड हाइपोकलीमिया व्हेन द पोटेशियम लेवल इज बिटवीन 3 टू 3.5 डेफिनेटली गिव अ ओरल पोटेशियम क्लोराइड टू द पेशेंट एंड दिस ओरल पोटेशियम क्लोराइड व्हिच इज गिवन टू द पेशेंट दिस इज व्हाट इज नोन एज स्पॉट क्लोर ओके दिस इज व्हाट इज नोन एज द स्पॉट क्लोर बट इफ देयर इज मॉडरेट टू सीवियर हाइपोकलीमिया इन द पेशेंट इफ दे टॉक अबाउट मॉडरेट टू सीवियर हाइपोकलीमिया definitely you need to change the route of the patient okay so if there is moderate to severe hypokalemia or if the patient is unable to take the potassium chloride orally definitely in this condition you need to give iv potassium chloride to the patient okay you need to give iv potassium chloride to the patient no issues with this i don't think so there would have been any issue answering this one now okay <coughs> so these are the important things that you need to remember apart from that if i talk about severe hypokalemia If there is a very severe hypokalemia, if the potassium level is less than two point five milliequivalents per liter, for example, so please remember in this condition definitely it will lead to this condition can cause a arrhythmia known as torsadus depointer. Okay, so hypomagnesemia and hypokalemia are the two conditions where there would be hypo. <coughs> okay, so please remember these are the two conditions where the patient can have. Torsadus depointus. Okay, torsadus depointus is nothing but it is a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Okay, it is a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia in the patient. No issues with this, anybody? Please remember this. Okay. Now moving further. I hope so. I have made myself clear with potassium. Now moving further with another important one, and that is calcium. Okay. So if I talk about calcium, first of all, talking about the normal levels of calcium. As I told you, potassium is a relaxing hormone which leads to diastole. बट कैल्शियम इज अटिंग हॉर्मोन विच कॉजेज सिस्टोल ठीक है सो अगर कैल्शियम में कोई दिक्कत होगी यू नीड टू चेक फॉर द क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स दैट इज मोर इम्पोर्टेंट सो कैल्शियम इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द नॉर्मल सीरम कैल्शियम लेवल इज बिटवीन नाइन टू इलेवन मिलीग्राम पर सेंट और नाइन टू इलेवन मिलीग्राम पर डेसिलीटर ठीक है तो दीज आर द नॉर्मल सीरम कैल्शियम लेवल नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द फर्स्ट ईसीजी ओवर यूर ओके सो यूर इन द फर्स्ट केस द पेशेंट प्रेजेंट टू यू With muscle weakness, definitely. Okay, here the patient presents to you with <coughs> muscle weakness. There is irritability or there is uh, anxiety in the patient. Okay, the patient uh, has some breathing difficulty. Why? Because there is laryngospasm in the patient. Okay, all of these features. Sometimes even the patient can present to you with seizures. Okay, if there is a severe uh, manifestation, and definitely there would be muscle cramps. There can be features of heart failure in the patient. And when you examine the patient, these are the two features which are classically seen what are these two classical features which are seen so first one when you tap along the face okay when you tap along his uh, facial now what will happen he will grimace he will show abnormal facial expression that is what is known as grimace so when you tap along the uh, facial border definitely he will grimace and this is what is known as the chowstex sign this is what is known as the chowstex sign whereas the another feature when you try to in, when you tie a bp cuff around his arm and when you try to inflate this bp cuff what will happen definitely the patient will undergo a carpopedal spasm this kind of a carpopedal spasm as you can see in this image this one is seen and this carpopedal spasm which is seen in this patient and inflating the bp cuff this is actually known as the trozeo sign this is known as the trozeo sign and this trozeo sign also has another name it is also known as obstetrician hands or it is also known as the carpopedal spasm straight away theek hai so these are the features and these are nothing but these are the features of titani and what do we mean by titani titani is a feature of hypocalcemia where the patient uh, will have features like seizures hypocalcemic seizures honge 
where the patient can have muscle cramp the patient will have carpopedal spasm the chostic sign along with that there would be irritability cns manifestation from there okay so definitely with these signs we are able to diagnose that the patient is having hypocalcemia when we send the blood sample definitely the serum calcium levels would be low they would be less than 9 mg percent and if i take a ecg what are the features that would be seen on ecg in cases of hypocalcemia so please remember here the most important feature that you can see over here if you see the distance between the q wave and the t wave okay so definitely the distance would be increased that means this is what is known as qt prolongation so qt prolongation is actually a feature of hypocalcemia qt prolongation is a feature of hypocalcemia there can also be some effects on the t wave but mainly there would be effects on the qt interval and the qt interval would be prolonged so first important thing here you can see qt prolongation in this patient no issues with this so please remember this is the impo most important one that you need to remember so here that we know now the diagnosis is definitely hypocalcemia in the patient right so now what is the treatment of hypocalcemia as i told you if the patient is having low levels of calcium what should be given definitely calcium should be given so here the treatment of choice is definitely the drug of choice would be uh, again iv 10% calcium glucone what should be given here iv 10% calcium glucone should be given to this patient no issues with this anybody i hope so this was uh, pretty easy for all of you now considering <coughs> okay so here they might ask you what is the cause of death okay so as i told you tetani usually occurs in the patient but if the tetani persists and if there is a severe hypocalcemia in the patient the cause of death in this patient can be laryngospasm okay there can be laryngospasm and the patient will have breathing difficulty that can land up the patient in respiratory arrest okay now if i talk about the next ecg that you can see over here here the patient if i talk about the comparative uh, features there were the, there the, we have discussed about the symptoms of the patient in the other case the case number 2 now the patient usually uh, presents to you with decreased ability to concentrate here the patient can have muscle weakness here the patient will have arrhythmias there in the thing okay there would be palpitations there would be sweating in the patient okay the patient can have multiple syncopal attacks due to the arrhythmias okay so all of these features are usually seen and if i talk about the ecg okay what would be seen on ecg so there is a important thing that you need to check on ecg first there, there uh, we can see qt prolongation in hypocalcemia so therefore in this condition we can see a qt shortening so a shortened qt interval is seen over here so first of all you can see a qt shortening sometimes even you can see a osborn wave osborn wave is definitely a feature of hypothermia but it can sometimes be encountered in hypercalcemia as well okay so first is definitely qt shortening first thing apart from that definitely premature ventricular complexes are sometimes encountered okay this uh, premature ventricular complexes are also known as ectopic beats or extra systole so they are also sometimes seen and rarely we can see a st segment elevation in this condition theek okay? hai so that is most important you need to see here you can see the qt interval is actually very short in that okay so these are the two important ecg features of a condition what is called as hypercalcemia so now definitely the calcium levels are increased so what to do now the calcium levels might be around uh, uh like more than 11 mg percent they can be around around 13 mg percent so what should be done for this patient so if the patient presents to you with hypercalcemia the treatment for this condition definitely because in hypercalcemia the patient as i told you the patient would have arrhythmia and the cause of death over here the patient can land up in systolic arrest as we discussed calcium causes systole so if there is excessive calcium in the patient that can land up the patient in systolic arrest and the patient can die so first thing that you need to <coughs> i think about a systolic arrest in the patient and therefore in cases of hypercalcemia the first aim is to decrease the serum calcium levels and uh, it can be done with a drug and the drug of choice for this condition is definitely iv bisphosphonates as we know bisphosphonates are usually the drug of choice for osteoporosis okay they are the drug of choice for osteoporosis what they do they will decrease the serum calcium levels by taking the serum calcium and depositing it uh, depositing it in the bone making the bones even stronger okay so these are the best drugs to be given usually iv bisphosphonates and the drug that we prefer is definitely ibandrone okay so ibandrone is given iv in this patient for hypo hypercalcemia but this is the drug of choice definitely but if they ask you what is the first line management 
So if they ask you the first line management, definitely in cases of hypercalcemia, the first line management is IV fluids. Okay, and why IV fluids are given? Definitely IV fluids are given to the patient for hydration. So the first aim is definitely hydration of the patient. Give as much fluids as possible. Okay, so IV fluids are definitely given as the first choice. Then definitely we can move on to IV bisphosphonates in the patient. Definitely we can even give IV furosemide to the patient. That is lasic. Okay, diuretic. Again a loop diuretic. And as we know. Loop diuretics. Loop loses calcium. Yes, of course. Loop loses calcium. So therefore, loop diuretics like furosemide are known to cause loss of calcium inside the urine, and they will lead to calciuria in the patient. Right. So the, this is the important mechanism with which furosemide will help in hypercalcemia. Apart from that, definitely we can give a calcitonin nasal spray to the patient. Why? Calcitonin, as we know, it is antagonistic to parathormone. Parathormone is known to increase serum calcium levels, whereas calcitonin is known to decrease serum calcium levels. And for the same reason, it is given over here. Calcitonin nasal spray is usually given in this patient. Okay, no issues with this. I hope so. These were very clear. Now, if I talk about certain causes of hyper and hypocalcemia, so if I give you an insight of hypercalcemia now, please remember, guys, they always ask you about calcium. Okay, mostly they are uh, interested to ask you about potassium, calcium, or sodium. These are the three most important ones. So if I talk about hypercalcemia first, the latter we discussed, okay? So it can definitely be seen in conditions when there is calcium overdose in a patient. Somebody has taken excess of calcium, okay? Maybe medicines of calcium. Then it is uh, the most important cause is hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism can be due to multiple other conditions, but the most common is definitely a parathyroid adenoma, okay? So that is one of the important causes. Then men one syndrome, as we know, men one syndrome or Wormer syndrome. It also has parathyroid adenoma, and that is again a cause of hypercalcemia in the patient. Okay. <laughs> Apart from this, definitely alcohol can be one of the important causes. Dollinger Ellison syndrome, uh, vitamin D intoxication. Okay. So vitamin D intoxication or excess of vitamin D inside the body is also a cause of hypercalcemia because vitamin D is known to increase serum calcium levels. Right. Apart from that, definitely sarcoidosis is one of the important conditions because we know the granuloma, the non-casein granuloma of sarcoidosis. Is known to uh, activate the rate limiting enzyme of vitamin D synthesis, that is one alpha hydroxylase, which will increase vitamin D levels and again increasing the serum calcium levels. Therefore, okay. Apart from that, definitely some cancers like small cell carcinoma of lung or uh, squamous cell carcinoma of lung mainly. So the most common paraneoplastic syndrome associated with squamous cell carcinoma of lung is nothing but hypercalcemia. So squamous cell carcinoma of lung is also one of the important causes of hypercalcemia. Apart from that, multiple myeloma. Which causes osteolytic lesions in bones and thereby increasing the serum calcium levels is also one of the important causes. Okay. Apart from that, if I talk about hypocalcemia, guys, on the other hand, hypocalcemia would be opposite. Hyperparathyroidism causes hypercalcemia, so hypoparathyroidism would lead to hypocalcemia. So if there is decreased parathyroid levels, okay, and parathormone levels would be decreased due to some damage to the parathyroid gland. Okay. Apart from that, definitely it can be due to malabsorption of vitamin D or malabsorption of calcium itself. Okay. So uh, usually in conditions like colitis, it can be inflammatory bowel disease, for example. Apart from that, definitely if there is hyperphosphatemia, why? Because in cases of hyperphosphatemia, like in chronic kidney disease, what happens usually? Uh, the phosphate would uh, combine with calcium and they will go and deposit into the bone, thereby decreasing the serum calcium levels. That is that is also an important cause of hypocalcemia. So I hope I have made myself clear with the causes of hypo as well as hypercalcemia as well. But these are the most important things. You might be thinking, "Can I causes? Why not write?" Please remember, guys. Definitely, I can write the causes. But I hope so. If you understand the basic concept behind it, you will remember all the causes. Okay. But the important are these things which I am writing down. These you cannot forget at any cost. Okay. These are the usual ones. Just by questions, you can ask. Causes can be asked, ja but very rarely. But these are the most important ones. Okay. Moving further, now talking about the last one, and that is what is sodium, and that is the most important one now. As we know, so hyponatremia is one of the most common electrolyte abnormalities or electrolyte disturbances that we encounter in usually hospitalized patients. Okay, so if I talk about sodium now, okay, so sodium, the normal value of sodium is usually between one thirty-five to one forty-five milliequivalents per liter. Okay, the normal value of sodium is between one thirty-five to one forty-five milliequivalents per liter. Okay, I hope you are quite aware about this. Okay, so it is. Between one thirty-five to one forty-five milliequivalents per liter. <coughs> Important thing that you need to remember about sodium, guys, is please remember 
Yeah, I talk first of all about the type, and then I'll uh, yeah. So if if the level of sodium goes less than one thirty five milliequivalents per liter, then definitely it will lead to hyponatremia. If the level is more than one forty five milliequivalents per liter, it would lead to hypernatremia, right? And please remember, hyponatremia versus hypernatremia, both of them, both of them, please remember, both of them are harmful for our body. Okay, both of them are definitely harmful for our body. Okay, that is more important. Please remember this. Okay, because both of them can lead to seizures, life-threatening seizures. Hyponatremia may be ho sakte, whereas hypernatremia may be ho sakte. That is important to be remembered. Now, if I talk about the conditions, okay. So, if I talk about hypernatremia at first, hypernatremia ke kam causes hai. So, you need to just remember that. So now, first of all, first of all, if I talk about hypernatremia in the patient, okay, hypernatremia can occur due to, for example, osmotic diarrhea, okay, where there is loss of water from the body, but the solute or the electrolytes are not lost as such, okay. So in osmotic diarrhea, usually the sodium levels might increase. Apart from that, definitely if there is loss of water from the body, this loss of water uh, from the body can be due to excessive sweating in the patient. Or it can be something uh, like polydipsia in the patient, okay? Uh, so where there is loss of water from the body or diabetes insipidus. Definitely, in cases of diabetes insipidus, uh, the patient will have excessive loss of water from the body, and the solute or the salts will retain inside the body, increasing uh, the serum sodium levels inside the body, leading to hypernatremia. Overdose or excess of mannitol inside the body can also lead to hypernatremia in the patient. Okay? How to treat hypernatremia? Usually, hypernatremia. Would be life threatening if the sodium level is around one fifty eight milli equivalents per liter. Okay, or if these are the other sodium levels, hai, definitely we need to treat the patient uh, very rapidly. And the first thing that we give in cases of hypernatremia is definitely we need to give a hypotonic fluid. And hypotonic fluids which are given is nothing but IV five percent dextrose. Okay, please remember we need to give IV five percent dextrose to the patient usually. Or half normal saline is also given. But again, that is also added with five percent dextrose. Okay, so that is to be given. Never give normal saline to the patient of hypernatremia because that will rather worsen the condition. Half normal saline, that is forty-five milli equivalent, just me. Okay, na that can be given. Okay, but never give the ninety-one. Okay, so if I talk about this condition, guys, please remember, as I talked about hypernatremia. In cases of hypernatremia, the drug of choice is definitely IV five percent dextrose. Now, if I talk about a more important condition, and that is hyponatremia, where you most of you confuse, tend to confuse. So, hyponatremia. If I talk about anything less than one thirty-five milli equivalents per liter is considered hyponatremia, and usually the patient will have life-threatening seizures if the value is less than one twenty-five milli equivalents per liter. Here, it would be more than one fifty. Okay. So, both of them seizures will be. In hyponatremia, it is much more severe and much more common. Please remember, in hyponatremia now. Please remember, it depends completely on the plasma osmolality. What is the normal plasma osmolality? As we know, the plasma normal plasma osmolality is between two eighty five to two ninety five milli osmoles per liter, whereas the normal urine osmolality, the normal urine osmolality is between hundred to nine hundred milli osmoles per liter. तुम बोलोगे इतना difference? Yes. Please remember to maintain a narrow range of plasma osmolality. The urine osmolality has a wider range. क्यों? क्योंकि अगर plasma osmolality को ठीक करना है तो यूरिन ऑस्मोलैरिटी बदलती रहेगी ओके एंड देयर फॉर यूरिन ऑस्मोलैरिटी हैज अ वाइडर रेंज ऑफ 100 टू 900 वेयर एज प्लाज्मा ऑस्मोलैरिटी इज मेंटेन बिटवीन अ नैरो रेंज ऑफ 285 टू 295 मिली ऑस्मोस पर लीटर ओके दैट इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द नॉर्मल मेटाबॉलिज्म ऑफ द बॉडी सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन द प्लाज्मा ऑस्मोलैरिटी बिकॉज़ एज वी नो द सॉल्यूट्स और द आयंस इनसाइड द बॉडी विल डिटरमाइन द प्लाज्मा ऑस्मोलैरिटी कितने सॉल्यूट्स हैव इन इन बॉडी Uh, it can be your sugars or it can be your ions like potassium, sodium. That will decide the plasma osmolality, right? So please remember. <coughs> sorry, it can be either a hypertonic hyponatremia. What do we mean by hypertonic hyponatremia? Here the plasma osmolality is higher, and that is what is called as hypertonic hyponatremia. Or second condition हो सकती है hypotonic hypo hyponatremia. Okay. The more common one is definitely the hypotonic hyponatremia. Just telling you a hypertonic hyponatremia. A key example is that you need to remember. So hypertonic hyponatremia, how can you say? You will say that if sodium decides on the osmolality, so if sodium is decreasing, therefore the tonicity or the osmolality will go down. So this is the opposite. So please remember, we have a condition known as non-ketotic hyperosmolar coma. 
what happens in non ketotic hypoalbuminemia or coma we know it is a complication of diabetes mellitus so usually what happens in this condition there is excess usually around 600 mg percent of blood sugar is there okay so plasma mein sugar ki level bahut zyada high ho jati hai so around 600 mg percent of blood sugar is there please remember and as we know sugar also contributes to plasma osmolality and that is the reason why as sugar contributes to plasma osmolality therefore the patient will have increased plasma osmolality and therefore it is termed as hypertonic okay but alongside please remember there would be loss of sodium from the body okay and that uh, that is the reason why there would be a hyponatremia in this patient okay and there, therefore there would be hyponatremia in this patient no issues with this anybody so just remember this at least you need to remember the most important thing theek hai na yaad rakhna sorry so please remember what happens due to excess of glucose inside the plasma excess of glucose inside the plasma or uh, the glucose will draw in some water okay due to increased plasma osmolality to dilute it some water would be brought inside the vessels or jab water laya jata hai inside the vessels what will happen there would be dilution of the plasma and if there is dilution of the plasma the patient can experience hyponatremia so it is a dilutional hyponatremia due to increased osmotic load or due to increased blood sugar levels theek okay? hai so this is very easy when hypertonic hyponatremia nahi bhi yaad rehta hai no not very important hypotonic is much more important hypotonic hyponatremia ki agar main baat karu hypotonic hyponatremia guys please remember all of these are the three different types of hypotonic hyponatremia hypotonic matlab the plasma osmolality is going down because the sodium value is decreasing right this is very straight forward funda so hypotonic hyponatremia ki agar main baat karu it can be either a hypovolemic hyponatremia so hypovolemic volumic matlab total body water and hyponatremia matlab total body salt or your sodium level theek hai so do cheeze hame discuss karni hai either the total body water and the total body salt theek hai so first condition they are saying it is hypovolemic hyponatremia so here there is loss of total body water from the body and there is also loss of total body salt from the body matlab water bhi ja raha hai bahar aur salt bhi ja raha hai so excess of water and sodium is excreted outside the body right so that is what is seen in conditions of hypovolemic hyponatremia so dono kam ho rahe is it is termed as hypovolemic hyponatremia and it is usually seen in conditions like diarrhea right it is straight forward it is seen in conditions like diarrhea diarrhea mein kya hota hai excess of water and as well as sodium is excreted out of the body right that is what is seen in cases of uh, hypovolemic hyponatremia right apart from this definitely in a condition <clears throat> in a condition that is what is known as cerebral salt wasting syndrome cerebral salt wasting syndrome mein kya hota hai for example if a patient uh, has sustained a trauma and uh, now he has a subarachnoid hemorrhage or any of the hemorrhages for example and due to head injury what happens there is a release of brain natriuretic peptide when bnp increases theek hai bnp hame pata hai heart failure mein bhi increase hota hai theek hai so bnp brain natriuretic peptide when it increases it causes loss of sodium and uh, sodium out of the body theek hai so it causes natriuresis natriuresis matlab loss of sodium inside the urine so bnp ka kaam hi yahi hota hai brain natriuretic peptide so it causes natriuresis और जब बहुत ज्यादा सोडियम नैट्री यूरस हो जाता है या जा, बहुत ज्यादा सोडियम लॉस हो जाता है द पेशेंट कैन लैंड अप इन हाइपोनेट्रीमिया ओके सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर ब्रेन नैट्रीटिक पेप्साइड कॉजेस लॉस ऑफ वाटर एज वेल एज लॉस ऑफ सोडियम फ्रॉम द बॉडी एंड देफो इट लैंड ऑफ द पेशेंट इन हाइपोवॉलिमिक हाइपोनेट्रीमिया ठीक है नो इश्यूज विद दिस एनी बडी तो हियर इन दिस कंडीशन लाइक डायरिया और सेरेब्रल सॉल्ट वेस्टिंग सिंड्रोम द टोटल बॉडी वाटर एज वेल एज द टोटल बॉडी सॉल्ट वेट इक्वी and therefore what should be the treatment definitely the treatment would be iv fluids yes here you need to do fluid resuscitation so agar fluids doge for example you will give a uh, normal saline to the patient okay so definitely the patient can improve apart from that the second condition is u volemic hyponatremia so this is confusing somewhat i tell you the cause first so here the cause is sids that is syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion mein kya hoga there is excess of adh or anti diuretic hormone which is secreted inside the body as we know normally the anti diuretic hormone is secreted by the posterior pituitary gland okay so for example if there is some infections like cerebral toxoplasmosis meningitis encephalitis brain abscess okay or some tumor of the posterior pituitary all of these conditions will increase the adh secretion apart from that definitely adh secretion can also occur uh, via ectopic cells it can be by the um, small cell carcinoma ke malignant cells as we know the small cell carcinoma of lung it has a paraneoplastic syndrome and one of the common paraneoplastic syndrome associated with small cell carcinoma of lung is sids due to excess of adh secretion from the 
from those malignant cells right one of the reasons can be uh, small cell carcinoma of lung the other can be carcinoid tumors for ectopic production of this adh okay so all of these were causes of sidh okay abhi causes samajh gaye so sidh or syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion yahan pe zyada adh hai and what is the function of adh uh, so please remember anti diuretic hormone naam se pata chal raha hai anti diuretic so it will stop diuresis what do we mean by diuresis diuretic diuresis means urine formation तो अगर वो यूरिन एक्सक्रीशन ये यूरिन फॉर्मेशन कम कर देगा दैट मीन वॉट विल हैपन एक्सेस ऑफ सॉरी एक्सेस ऑफ वॉटर इज रिटेन इन साइड द बॉडी ठीक है सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर एंटी डायोरेटिक हॉर्मोन का काम क्या होता है इट विल डिक्रीज द यूरिन आउटपुट एंड राधर इंक्रीज द रिटेंशन ऑफ वॉटर इन साइड द बॉडी अगर वो वॉटर रिटेन करता है इन साइड द बॉडी वॉट विल हैपन द टोटल बॉडी वॉटर विल इंक्रीज ओके द टोटल बॉडी वॉटर विल एक्सेसिवली इंक्रीज एक्सेसिवली राइज बट द टोटल बॉडी सॉल्ट इज नॉर्मल बिकॉज एडीएच Does not have any role on the total body salt. As ADH usually, it is secreted by the posterior pituitary and it acts on the V2 receptors of the kidney on the collecting tubule. And these V2 receptors are also known as aquaporin channels, which are only known to reabsorb water. So whenever ADH stimulates these V2 receptors, it will only reabsorb water and have no action on sodium. So therefore, there is excess of total body water now, but the total body salt is normal. So again, what will happen? प्लाज्मा डाइल्यूट हो जाएगा उसकी ऑस्मोलिटी कम हो जाएगी इसीलिए हाइपोटोनिक हो जाएगा ठीक है फर्स्ट थिंग सो नाउ इफ प्लाज्मा इज डाइल्यूटेड सो एंड देयरफॉर प्रोपोर्शनली सी टोटल बॉडी सॉल्ट वैसे तो नॉर्मल है बट अगर हम वाटर के प्रोपोर्शन में देखें तो टोटल बॉडी सॉल्ट कम हो गया ना क्योंकि वाटर बहुत ज्यादा राइज हो गया सो प्रोपोर्शनेट इफ वी सी प्रोपोर्शनेटली द टोटल बॉडी सॉल्ट इज डिक्रीजिंग ओके सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अ प्रोपोर्शनेट डिक्रीज इन सीरम सोडियम लेवल्स ओके and this is what is seen in cases of sidh and this is what is known as dilutional hyponatremia due to dilution of plasma in medical terms it is called as u volumic hyponatremia it is a misnomer u volumic suit nahi hota but theek hai please remember this okay and what is the treatment of choice definitely in sidh we need to know, we know the drug of choice are definitely vaptans okay these are vasopressin antagonistic drugs okay so here the drug of choice would be definitely vaptans but vaptans akele kaam nahi karenge bahut zyada fluid ho chuka hai body mein so along with that definitely you need to do fluid restriction in the patient okay you need to stop giving fluids to the patient so fluid restriction is also there no issues with this then if i talk about the last one that is hypervolemic hyponatremia so yahan pe kya hoga for example in conditions like ascites when there is massive ascites or there is uh, congestive heart failure or there is chronic kidney disease in the patient what will happen now if there is ascites in the patient <coughs> sorry what will happen the fluid will go outside the blood vessels if the fluid goes outside the blood vessels there would be decreased circulating volume if the circulating volume decreases what will happen there would be decreased gfr if gfr decreases definitely there would be activation of a system called as ras that is renin angiotensin aldosterone system agar ras activate ho jati what will happen aldosterone will come in action agar aldosterone comes in action what will it cause as we know aldosterone hum maine pehle bhi bataya aldosterone causes excretion of potassium and h plus ions outside the body and it will cause retention of sodium and salt inside the body matlab wo sodium or sorry it will cause retention of water and sodium inside the body so it will retain water and sodium inside the body therefore thereby it will increase the total body water as well it will also increase the total body salt but it will also have more action on the total body water as compared to total body salt एल्डेस्टोरॉन वॉटर को भी रिटेन करेगा बॉडी में और सॉल्ट को भी रिटेन करेगा बट वॉटर को ज्यादा रिटेन करेगा इसकी वजह से द राइज इन टोटल बॉडी वॉटर इज मच मोर एज कम्पेयर टू द टोटल बॉडी सॉल्ट अगेन दर इज अ प्रपोर्शनेट डिफरेंस सो अगेन अभी टोटल बॉडी वॉटर भी राइज हो रहा है टोटल बॉडी सॉल्ट भी राइज हो रहा है बट दे आर नॉट इन अ प्रपोर्शन दे फोर वॉट हैपन्स अगेन द पेशेंट अगेन एक्सपीरियंस इज हाइपोनेट्रीमिया एज अगेन वी नो इट इज अ डायल्यूशनल हाइपोनेट्रीमिया अगेन ठीक है सो दैट इज वॉट इज नोन एज हाइपर वॉलिमिक हाइपोनेट्री hypervolemic too because there is increase in the total body water but there is uh, also rise in the total body salt but there is a proportionate decrease so dilution ho jata hai and that is what is the reason for hypervolemic hyponatremia here the drug of choice here the drug of choice you need to remember it is definitely aldosterone antagonist that we need to know and that is what is known as spironolactone okay the aldosterone antagonist that we know please remember this is what is known as spirino lactone theek hai spirino lactone kya karega aldosterone ko antagonize antagonize kar dega it will stop the action of the aldosterone and therefore there would be excretion of water uh, as well as some amount of sodium from the body theek hai and therefore the dilution kam ho jayega 
definitely the patient will improve with this okay so please remember spironolactone is definitely the drug of choice as i told you in cases of ascites okay in cases of ascites right no issues with this anybody so i hope all of you understood this please remember important things and magnesium ke bare mein ek important baat yaad rakhni if there is hypomagnesemia in the patient the patient can experience muscle weakness okay and hypomagnesemia unhone pucha tha a patient experiences muscle weakness after a diarrhea episode but hypokalemia option mein nahi tha as we know muscle weakness commonly is caused by hypokalemia but hypokalemia agar option mein na ho definitely uh, magnesium is the another iron when it decreases it also causes muscle weakness in the patient so excessive diarrhea or vomiting can lead to hypomagnesemia in the patient theek hai please remember this is important and definitely the drug of choice for hypomagnesemia is magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate is also given as a drug of choice in cases of torsades de pointes it is also given in cases of eclampsia right we know but magnesium sulfate is to be given with caution because recently there was a question on magnesium sulfate toxicity right so magnesium sulfate uh, uh, always you need to give with caution please remember to check for the deep tendon reflexes of the patient and also check for the respiratory rate because as we know um, magnesium sulfate toxicity can lead to decrease or diminish deep tendon reflexes and it will also decrease the respiratory rate of the patient causing respiratory compromise further leading to respiratory depression in the patient theek okay? hai so you need to have a look over this always whenever you treat a patient with magnesium sulfate in the patient okay no issues with this at least remember these things and thank you so much and i hope if you are having any issue to start please remember ki yaar nahi ho payega bahut thoda time bacha hai so i would request all of you guys to at least start okay once you start definitely it will take some time for you to catch up the speed so without waiting for the result at least start studying and all those who are starting on fresh definitely please guys try to increase pace day by day because it will not happen all of us sudden sudden theek hai na so but now start for do at least 3 hours 4 hours a day then increase it to 6 to 8 hours and then finally you will achieve the milestone of 10 to 12 hours per day as well okay so start studying without of without the fear of failure ki kya hoga kya nahi hoga that is a totally secondary thing okay so we'll meet in the subsequent session thank you so much and uh, let's meet in another session till then goodbye good luck